When it comes to infamous assassins with three names that killed vastly influential historical figures, John Wilkes Booth is, at the very least, in the top three. Like James Earl Ray and Lee Harvey Oswald, Booth shot his way into the history books by becoming the man who assassinated Abraham Lincoln, one of America's most beloved presidents. Like the other previously mentioned killers, Booth has become a bit of a historical celebrity at the center of one of the most talked about events to ever occur in America. However, there is still a wealth of fascinating information about the man himself that few know. John Wilkes Booth lived an incredibly interesting life before, during, and after his assassination of Lincoln. From his family background to the machinations that led to his fateful decision, and including a large number of unlikely coincidences, the story of John Wilkes Booth is definitely one worth telling. He was vastly overshadowed by his famous and successful family. John Wilkes Booth was, in many ways, a sort of Baldwin in his own time. Booth came from a famous acting family and his brother Edwin was a legitimate international celebrity. Edwin, the most notable in a family full of actors, toured the world performing Shakespearean roles for world leaders and dignitaries, including some American presidents. Oftentimes, Edwin would share the stage with his brothers, but he was undoubtedly the star of the bunch. Edwin eventually founded a theater of his own in New York and is still renowned as perhaps the greatest American actor and the greatest Hamlet of the 19th century. John Wilkes Booth dealt with fame the moment he exited the womb. While he was overshadowed by his more famous brother Edwin for the majority of his career, John also had to deal with the legacy of his father, a famous actor in his own right. The awesomely named Junius Brutus Booth spent the early 19th century touring England in Shakespearean roles and was most well known for his turn at Richard III. He eventually moved to the United States to further his career and sired a whole family of theater talents. John himself had a mildly successful acting career. While John Wilkes Booth's acting career never reached the heights of his more popular family members, he was still a very successful actor in his own right. He was good enough at it to make a permanent living doing it, which few could say at the time. He attracted some positive press attention, including a lot of notice when he reprised his father's famous role as Richard III. John worked as an actor his entire life, right up until his fateful assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln watched him star in a play years before the assassination. John Wilkes Booth was a mildly successful actor, but he was apparently notable enough to perform in front of some important audience members. Chief among these was the Commander-in-Chief, President Abraham Lincoln, who saw his future assassin perform in a play called The Marble Heart in Ford Theater, the very site of their later run-in. This early encounter also happened to occur a few days before Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address, one of his most famous acts. His brother's mistress was on stage when John assassinated Lincoln. Surely the Lincoln assassination was a memorable and traumatic moment for everyone who witnessed it. However, the incident may have been even more shocking for one particular person. Laura Keene was acting on stage when Lincoln was shot and no doubt watched as his assassin leapt onto the stage and escaped. Keene was probably pretty surprised to see the brother of her secret lover Edwin Booth running away after murdering the president. It was likely the most memorable performance of her career, but not for a good reason. Booth starred in a production of Julius Caesar, months before the assassination. History is rife with fantastic ironies and this is one of the all-time great examples. A few months before John Wilkes Booth's infamous assassination of Abraham Lincoln, Booth and his brothers starred in a production of Julius Caesar. Not only is the play the inspiration for their father's terrific name, it also happens to be the story of an important world leader getting assassinated. Booth would even borrow a supposed quote from the real-life Brutus when killing the president, Six Semper Tyrannus. One year before the assassination, his brother Edwin saved Lincoln's son's life. Sometimes history seems way too coincidental to be real. In what appears to be a twisted case of karma gone wrong, it eventually came to light that the Lincolns and the Booths were linked before the fateful assassination. John Wilkes Booth's super-famous older brother Edwin just so happened to save the life of Abraham Lincoln's son, Robert Todd, a year before John killed Abe. Robert Todd had almost fallen under a moving train and Edwin pulled him back in the nick of time. He tried to kidnap Lincoln a month before the assassination. The personal links between Abraham Lincoln and John Wilkes Booth keep piling up. 
While their earlier run-ins were merely coincidence, at this point in their history, Booth started willfully trying to bring the two together. Before eventually deciding to murder the president, Booth first tried a less violent approach when he plotted to kidnap Lincoln instead. This plot occurred a month before the eventual assassination, but fizzled when Lincoln simply didn't show up where Booth thought he would. Booth moved on to Plan B. He belonged to a crazy right-wing political party. John Wilkes Booth wasn't just a lone wolf as history sometimes portrays him. Booth was involved in wacko politics long before the decision to snuff out he of the stovepipe hat. Booth belonged to the Know Nothing Party, an extreme right-wing group that hated Lincoln and violently opposed immigration and integration. The party was so named because of its intense secrecy, as members were sworn to say they knew nothing if ever asked. It was through this organization that Booth began making the connections that would lead to his anti-Abe plotting. He had accomplices who were supposed to assassinate different politicians. History tends to portray the Lincoln assassination as a singular event, which really misses out on the scope of the whole thing. Lincoln was killed as part of a concerted effort to wipe out his entire political structure. Simultaneous strikes were planned for several other prominent politicians on the same night, although only one was actually carried out. General Ulysses Grant didn't attend the play as planned, whereas the would-be assassin of Vice President Andrew Johnson simply chickened out. Secretary of State William Seward was attacked in his home and stabbed in the neck, but was rescued by his son, and survived. All of these would-be killers were accomplices of John Wilkes Booth. He broke his leg, leaping to the stage after shooting Lincoln. Few talk about just how much of an action scene the assassination of Lincoln was. John Wilkes Booth burst into Lincoln's private balcony seat, plugged him in the back of the head, and then dramatically leaped down to the stage to make his escape. Since Booth was just an actor and not an actual character in a Hollywood movie, he of course broke his leg during the massive drop. He kept moving, however, fighting through the pain to successfully escape and go on the run. A doctor who treated the fugitive Booth was sentenced to life in prison. Due to the anti-Lincoln conspiracy he was a part of, John Wilkes Booth had some serious connections that helped him escape and stay on the run after his infamous slaying. One of these hookups found Booth a doctor, Samuel Mudd, who was willing to treat his badly broken leg. Mudd successfully treated the leg and helped Booth evade justice for a little while longer, but he paid a heavy price for his treasonous actions. Mudd was sentenced to life in prison, a sentence that was eventually commuted by a future president. A Confederate spy ring helped Booth stay on the run. John Wilkes Booth is often described as a sort of lone wolf, like Lee Harvey Oswald supposedly was, but the truth is that Booth was at the heart of a vast right-wing Confederate-led conspiracy to oust Abraham Lincoln. This involvement, which included membership in the Know Nothing Party, helped Booth make some powerful connections, and that network leapt into action once Booth had successfully escaped the scene of his grisly crime. A Confederate spy ring helped Booth stay on the run despite an enormous manhunt for him, a feat he kept up for almost two weeks. The man who shot John Wilkes Booth was extremely insane. Even the people surrounding John Wilkes Booth in his worst moment were incredibly interesting. Chief among these is Boston Corbett, the man who shot and killed Booth. Corbett was part of a gigantic manhunt to find the president's killer, but unlike many others, a monetary reward was not foremost in Corbett's mind. Corbett had some deeper motivations, including an insane obsession with religion that had seen him previously castrate himself. Some believe Corbett was suffering from mercury poisoning. It took John three hours for Booth to die after being shot. As in many good stories, the final chapter in John Wilkes Booth's tale really dragged on. After being shot by Boston Corbett, Booth was in agony, but not yet dead. He was taken to a nearby house where medical aid was attempted, but ultimately proved unsuccessful. Although some in the hunting party wanted Booth to live so he could stand trial, most were happy when he finally expired after three painful hours. If you found this video fascinating, don't forget to subscribe to Time Voyagers for more captivating stories about weapons, war, and the secrets of the past. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss any episodes, and share this video with your friends. See you on the next journey through time.